chapter number two. We're continuing our look. This will be the, the, the third and hopefully the last day that we look. Not that I'm in a rush, but the fact is we don't rush God's word. Um, but the fact is we do want to understand who the Antichrist is. And the only way you're going to understand it with understanding, with truth and, and, and accuracy, is by listening to the Apostle Paul. And the, the goal of 2 Thessalonians, I'm going to remind you this each week, it's, it's a look at the future pro prophetic program here on the earth with the nation of Israel, focusing on the land, particularly the land of Israel in this area here, in the Middle East. Although it, it is also a worldwide phenomenon going on, um, the focus of the book, just like when you look at Revelation and all the prophets of, of the Old Testament, yes, he'll talk about the world and the earth, but the other nations of the earth are pretty much secondary to the land of Israel. So when, you're, when we're reading what Paul is telling us, it, it, the focus is the area of the Middle East, particularly Jerusalem and Israel and, and, and the nation of Israel and that area in the Middle East where they live, the land of Palestine. All this stuff is going to happen there. Uh, it's not going to be Europe and things like that. There's a lot of men in, the script, in, the, um, in Christendom who, when, it, when talk of the Antichrist, they talk about the revised Roman Empire, and they're partially true. The, the Gentile power that was in power during the Lord's Day and during the time that the Apostle Paul was there was Rome. Rome was one of, came out of one of the, the, uh, the four... Uh, horns there, or the, the four parts of Alexander the Great's Gr Grecian, Roman, Grecian Empire. It was called the Greco-Roman Empire, but it's, it was the Middle Eastern one. The, 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 the Gentile power that was in Jerusalem was Rome at that day. Well, what we're going to see is it won't be Rome. It will be the Assyrian Empire, which will be the Middle Eastern Empire of, of that revised, it's, it's really the revised Alexander the Great Greek Empire. Okay, there, it, it was split in four, four parts, and it's going to be that, that part there, the Middle Eastern part there. Um, where, it was Rome. It will be the Assyrian Empire, and we're going to see all of that tonight. Tonight, we're going to look at, hopefully, this will be our, our last of the third of who is the Antichrist. And I want you to understand that Paul and God wants us to have perfect understanding, or at least as good as we can, about this man and about the issues because if you don't, then you're going to think that you're going to see them. Now, not you, Christianity. We got others who, who listen to this on the Internet when Brother Don puts it there who have all type of confusion about the last days, the end times. And what they don't do is rightly divide the scriptures. They don't listen to Paul and let Paul explain it. They let Hal Lindsey or they'll let some other guy of, of our contemporary day try to explain something from God's word. You need to listen to Paul. Here's why I say that. Look at chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, and that's that day of Christ, the day of the Lord's wrath, as it were, in, in prophecy. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, we went through the, the falling away. Uh, that's a time where Israel will return to that animal sacrifice, and then that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That's the Antichrist. Um, it, it's just a description of who he is, the man of sin. Perdition means his, his, his doom is sealed. He's got, he's got his, 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 his fate is sealed because he, he went against the Lord. Um, in the first half of that 70th week, the first three and a half years of that seven-year period, um, you can describe him as the man of sin. Uh, the book of, Dan, uh, book of Revelation said he then goes in perdition in that last three and a half years. We'll probably see some of that as well tonight. Verse 4, this, this man who opposeth, and exalted himself. That's Antichrist, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, that's what's going to be the, the trigger of the great tribulation. The last three and a half years, when this guy sits there and says, I'm God, it's going to be Satan incarnate. The Antichrist is actually going to suffer a deadly womb. He's going to die and go to hell. Satan, who's kicked out of heaven by Michael, will come and, and animate the man's body. God is going to allow strong delusion and supernatural things, so that's going to be no problem for Satan to do that. Satan is good at getting, Satan, who's a spirit, he can, he can uh, him and his fallen angels, 
especially during the Lord's Day and, and during that time where supernatural things will be in full effect, can actually indwell people and animals and stuff. They got in the swine. I believe Satan was there. When the, when the Bible called him the serpent back there, he used the serpent back there to full leave. He's called the old dragon. I believe he, he would, he would, um, he did some type of genetic manipulation of, of a creature that God created and he made him a fire breathing dragon. I believe those things are real. So when we look at that, Satan is going to take over this man's body. He's going to be resurrected as it were, okay? But look at verse 5 and we're going to see the details of all that other stuff. Verse five, by the way, in verse 4, last week we saw that the word antichrist is actually in the Bible. We went and saw those passages in 1 John and 2 John, okay? So that's a Bible word. Um, Look at verse 5. Here's what I want you to see. Paul says to those Thessalonian grace believers, Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Now that's important because what the Apostle Paul is saying is when he was there, and, and, and if you're following our Acts study on Sundays, we'll, we'll, get to the, we'll get there. Paul the Apostle preached to those Thessalonians about this day of the Lord, the day when the Antichrist would come. Now, all he had at this time was the Old Testament. So I decided I'm going to see if I can go back and use some of the verses that, Paul, that I believe Paul used. I mean, Paul understood a timeline of Daniel, so, so we know he, went, he used Daniel. So we're going to look at some of these. But before we do, go back to Matthew chapter 23, if you will. Go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew 23. And we saw this passage last week, but I want us to focus on something Matthew 23, the problem with Israel in the future, future from us, is when the fig tree buds, the Lord Jesus Christ curses the fig tree. The fig tree is not national Israel as people think about 1948. It's not. Fig trees from the beginning of creation with Genesis with our first parents, Adam and Eve, have been used to cover up. It's been a type of religion. National Israel is the vine tree, the grape tree. Um, the bramble, uh, over there in Judges, I believe Judges chapter 9, there's four trees. The bramble, that's the bush, that's the burning bush and all that. That's the uh, apostate Israel. The vine tree is national Israel. The olive tree represents spiritual Israel, the, the, the ones who have uh, the, the true religion. And then the, the fig tree, the one that the Lord cursed, henceforth no man shall eat of you, and it withered. It, that's religious Israel, okay? The religious life of Israel. He tells his apostles when you see that fig tree bud, Spiritually speaking, when, when the Antichrist begins, began, begins again, the animal sacrifices, okay? 